Hey, good morning, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a weekend. It is Saturday, January 17th, 2026, 1108 a.m. That's California time here. Latest quake shows a 4.1. Uh, looks like that's coming in there off the coast of uh, Panama, potentially. One of the latest earthquakes on the globe. Still quite a bit of activity happening here across the Japan region overnight. Just a cluster of earthquakes also down here across the typical crunch zone, seeing uh, pretty decent uptick in earthquake activity as well. A little bit of larger movement uh, south here into the South Sandwich Trench. That's a subduction zone there, 5.4. That last had an 8.1 uh, back in 2000, 2021. Is the last eight-pointer struck there, but uh, we do get earthquakes happening there. Uh, before we get uh, to the earthquake movement, I want to talk about this space weather massive corona hole that uh, is currently facing the planet and providing with it uh, some decent high-speed solar wind stream. Now, we are up above 700 KMs a second. That uh, is pretty fast. That should stir up the auroras, right? Well, right now, it looks like everything's being suppressed because of the BTBZ component. Now, if we look here... At the latest data from the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center, notice that all these runtime dots are above the zero, meaning that they're in positive territory. You want those well below south here into the negative territory to allow the amplification of rewards to stir up. So it looks like for now, um, those will continue to be suppressed. It's possible we could see that uh, fluctuate a little bit. Either way, with the coronal hole being large in coverage area, uh, we should see uh, conditions persist there for the next couple days, next couple nights. And uh, we could could see the auroras there stir up, but right now not looking favorable there with the uh, BTBZ component. As far as flaring activity goes, we do have a number of active areas out here on the sun. Fairly massive sunspot region here. That's uh, turning into a more Earth-directed view. Also getting a little companion down here, it looks like. Got uh, quite a bit of complexity within that sunspot core. Uh, this area up here, really not too concerned with. This region, that center disk of the sun, is starting to stretch out a little bit. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of times when that happens, they tend to die off. But we'll continue to watch that. The main region right now is going to be this area back uh, over here across the eastern side of the sun. That harbors some potential for some M flare. Maybe even an X flare if it continues to... Um, um, stay complex there in terms of the magnetic complexity. 60% chance there for an M flare, X flare around 10% or so, C flare at 99% chance, and of course, aurora potential possible over the next couple nights, pending uh, you know that uh, BT BZ component. All right, earthquake activity up into the Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on. Cascadia slow slip events were elevated out here uh, yesterday. Let me show you guys that map here real quick again. Uh, and that was following that six-pointer offshore off the coast of Oregon, uh, not yesterday, but the day before. So that really amplified the stress and strain out here across the entirety of the Cascadia, it looks like. Um, so we'll see what this uh, comes out as later this evening, whether this is back and back off or if this is increasing in terms of the trimmer count. But this is from yesterday. We'll know uh, a little bit more later this evening. Uh, obviously, when we get the slow slip events elevated like this, that means that the stress is building across the locked area of the Cascadia. Uh, no more earthquakes up here across Northern California to report. Just uh, some activity from yesterday. Uh, right around the San Andreas Fault here, we had a 3.3 earthquake this morning. It looks like it's just off the creeping section here of the San Andreas Fault. A couple other aftershocks in there as well in the 2 and 1 range. Parkfield section of San Andreas Fault, pretty quiet. The Bay Area, if you look up here, uh, not a whole lot going on. There's a couple earthquakes underneath Lake Berryessa. Uh, a handful early this morning in the very small microquake range, but it's just kind of quiet out there for now. Um, Southern California, as far as that swarm that was going on down here across the Imperial Fault, looks like that came to a halt last night. Nothing new to report down here for now. Nothing really above 2.5 aside from those earthquakes uh, up north there along the San Andreas Fault and also on the western side of the San Joaquin Valley from yesterday. Uh, nothing showing up there for Yellowstone National Park, but let's 
go verify that. Make sure that is the accurate info that's being provided here to the public. Uh, let's check out this seismograph station right here. That does show a couple earthquakes from last night. Uh, I don't really see anything major in terms of any uptick going on here. Got, as I mentioned, a couple earthquakes here last night and early this morning. These are all very small microquakes. Nothing of any significant uh, movement happening up there across Yellowstone for now. Oil fields out around the area still active. Nothing really new to report across the east. Uh, these earthquakes there in Alabama from yesterday near Addison. A couple low grade two magnitude earthquakes. As uh, far as underneath the Big Island of Hawaii goes, let's see if we got a swarm stirring up here again. It does look like got uh, a couple different swarms from yesterday. Maybe potentially even another one coming up here. One thing I'm noticing is a southward migration here away from the summit area. That could be uh, a sign here that uh, episode 41 may not be what we think it will be. As far as the rinse and repeat cycle here. That's been taking place at Kilauea Volcano since December of 2024. So uh, things are changing underneath the area. Well, watch this migration. Let's go check out the inflation chart and see what we have here. Uh, see if anything's changing at the inflation level. It's just, like I say, it's, it's an odd event. Something that we haven't seen here um, in the last 13 months or so during, you know, during the period of eruption activity here. We haven't seen this, so something's changing down below the magma area uh, where the magma reservoir has been filling up and then uh, creating the eruption there within a week or a couple weeks time period. But uh, we do have that migration working its way south here. The inflation model, let's go check this out real quick, see what we have. <clears throat> uh, shows us leveling out, a little early to be leveling out here. Uh, so that's that's something we got to watch here closely. This is the uh, electronic tilt at the Kilauea Summit over the last two days. If you look back here at the last three months, here's our eruption phases here. Uh, up and down, obviously, inflation leading up to an eruption with deflation occurring. Here's our last episode 40. Um, we didn't really go down here in terms of the deflationary model, only about halfway compared to last time. Uh, so that, you know, the run-up, for the eruption is going to be a lot shorter compared to episode 40 uh, but we do have to watch and see how this behaves here we're leveling off right now uh, but either way interesting activity as uh, far as the earthquake happenings there uh, let's check out um, seismograph station here see what we got it's weird how it gets these earthquakes like that it comes in these little swarms of small magnitude quakes and they last for about Oh, I don't know. What's the time frame on this? Maybe 10 minutes or so. Bam, 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 bam. Earthquake activity. And then it die off. But if we go back the last couple days, it, it's had a uh, uh, kind of a number of swarms here. I guess this morning's would be number five. There's one there. and there's It's hard to see on this one. There's this morning's uh, swarm. Let's see if I can find a little bit different. Uh, see, there it is again. Uh, either way, it's, it's definitely uh, an odd event as far as the uh, earthquake pattern that's happening out here. We'll continue to watch that. Like I say, it looks like there's some migration going down south here towards the uh, away from the crater area. These are just below the surface as well. So it's right around where the magma and the stress is at, uh, down below where the inflation is occurring. So we'll watch that closely. I do think things are changing there. Um, as you know, it, it, possible it may continue on as it's been doing the past 13 months, but with this earthquake activity that's happening underneath the region, I know things are changing down there, which will ultimately affect the eruption at the surface level. All right, number of earthquakes there across Taiwan and up through Japan. Pretty good cluster going on there in the last 24 hours. Newer activity. Uh, consists of a couple earthquakes here up around the Kuro Cam Chaka Trench and an earthquake back over here around the Taiwan area. There was some newer activity around uh, Japan as well. See that in the white color rings indicating that newer activity. Just keep an eye on that. Pretty elevated out there recently. 
as uh, far as any close approach asteroids go here to the planet, not, uh, I don't think there's anything major going on. This is uh, today, 128,000 miles. That's well within the Earth-Moon distance, but that's only a little 16-foot small car size asteroid, newly discovered. But a 16-foot rock there, I'm trying to think that. that. That would burn up pretty quick in the atmosphere. It might leave a neat little streak or a fireball, but that uh, is fairly small. And this one here, even smaller, roughly within the same distance here. Notice how all these are getting you know, newly discovered. Even a lot of the bigger ones are newly discovered, except for this one. This one's been tracked since 2018. A 160-foot airplane-sized asteroid. Wow. I mean, something like that. Eey. That could uh, that could be an, a little neat show there. I don't know if I'd <laughs> want to be around that area when it uh, flew over. Uh, okay, so space or space. Storm Prediction Center here on this Saturday. Not a whole lot of severe weather out there. I guess that's good news for the majority of the folks out there. Nothing in terms of severe weather. We do have some snow falling out there. Seen some uh, snow squalls around uh, Nebraska and Kansas last night. That will continue there, it looks like, through the weekend and into early next week before. A little pattern change. I mean, this is going to be interesting how this develops. This is next weekend cluster of ice maybe some ice storms they seem to get those ice storms out there in oklahoma and kansas quite a bit uh that could be in the future here for next weekend a lot of cold air coming down intermixing with the warmer more moist air mass and also that could spell some severe weather trouble uh down there across the warm sector that uh is when you get the tornado potential out there so we'll have to cover that a little bit closer as we get we're a little bit uh, in more depth there when we get closer to that time period. Not a drop of rain there for California, folks. This is not looking good. I'm hoping things change. You know, the 8 to 14 day forecast out there, it fluctuates. Um, right now still shows what looks like Northern California favorable uh, to a return of wet weather out here. And January is one of our wetter months. You know, it... We only have technically probably February and March left in our rain season. April, things really start to dry out. Um, so we're getting down there. There's, uh, January looks not too wet out here as uh, far as the remainder of January. Yes, we picked up a decent amount of moisture, but we are starting to get behind because there's no storms that have been, you know, been, uh, been filling in. It, it, not good. Hopefully this comes back up here in terms of the rainfall accumulation uh, into February and March because April starts warming up. And then I know what's after that. Hundreds, 100 degree temperatures all summer long. Hey, but it's a dry heat, right? Yeah, right. I live around rice fields and orchards. It's just sometimes it almost feels like it's more humid and hotter than portions of the south. And I've been down there quite a bit. Texas Gulf here in uh Louisiana, yeah, it gets sticky and muggy, but try being around 110 degree weather with rice fields all around you. Hey, man, mosquito, it's mosquitoes love it. But uh, I've, I've lived out here the majority of my life. I, I guess I'm used to it. I know what to expect. Uh, but man, I, I think I'm I'm ready for a change. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I want to live somewhere where there's four seasons, not just summer or you know, it's cold. It's, it's cold out here this morning. I had a little bit of a frost out here on the grass and whatnot. I think it hit 34 or so. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good Saturday. We'll catch you guys out here for the uh, Saturday night update. Uh, of course, unless something major happens there. Have a good one. Uh, I've seen some donations there come in for the member drawing. Uh, a few gifted memberships there raise this up a little bit i don't think we're at 200 yet but if we can get up there around 200 we'll pick out three winners for the member drawing that's going to be held here in three days um if not we'll stay in the two category but hey that extra third person there uh, definitely raises the odds there to be picked out to win some prizes uh, when it comes to our monthly member drawing which we've been doing here for oh it's got to be close to four years now Every month we do this, uh, give away some gift cards, or if you want some geology type mining kit, I, I may throw some new stuff in here. I got to look and see what I can find. Most people want the uh, the moolah, you know, right off the bat, the the, um, 
gift cards and whatnot. And that's definitely understandable in, in this uh, uh, age and the economy right now. So, all right, I'm out of here. Have yourself a wonderful Saturday. Got a 3.5 outside of Anchorage. I just kind of spotted that. Nothing big going on there for now. But as always, be prepared. We'll catch you guys out here tonight. Take care.